Olivia, like a lot of students, just moved into her student accommodation this week. But it's been far from an easy journey to get here. Moldy, neglected houses, queuing for hours, and unaffordable rent. But the kitchen? It looked like someone had like literally emptied a bag of dirt onto their kitchen floor. Accountancy practice PwC shows that the student population at UK universities has risen by 400,000 pupils since 2019. Maintenance loads for students have risen by just 5.2%, but average student rent during that period across England is up 14.6%. Research suggests that after they pay their rent, students are left with just 50 pence of the maintenance load a week to live on. To wake up one morning and put my rent up by two, three hundred pounds a month, I have nothing that I can do about that. A furnished room in a house, £2,617 per when month. There's more demand, prices go up. Yeah, well, what do you do when there's a market failure? The market has failed. Recently, a huge housing crisis has been more and more prevalent in the news and also in my personal life. Student housing. I myself am a university student and going into my final year, I've been left to pick up the pieces to find a new place for me to live for my final year. Now you're probably saying, oh, just live at home, it's so much cheaper and easier for you. Well, not if you live in Essex and your university is all the way in Surrey. If I'm in, let's say, three days a week and I start at 10am. To get there on time, I have to get the 6am train, which gets me there at 8.25am. I'd get an open return, which would cost me £38.60. Times up by three and that would cost me £115.80. Times up by four, so for a whole month worth of travel, that would cost me £463.20. That's with a rail card. And without the booking fees. The UK housing crisis is on its knees and students are worried that they might not be able to find somewhere to live for their time at university. You're probably thinking, oh, but students get loads of money in their loan. Well, the student finance loans are calculated based on your family's income. If your parents or parent earns over a certain amount of income, then your loan will be calculated based on that. I've heard stories of students worried because the government expect those parents to pay for the rest and don't have enough rent money while they're studying their course. They expect every parent who has a child with only a small amount of student finance loans to pay for the rest. That gets paid to me in three instalments, once in September, once in January, and once in April. And the prices for a one bedroom flat, the average amount per month is 1,000 pounds. That is just in Surrey. Other places in the UK, such as London and Manchester, having an average of 2,000 to 3,000 pounds per month. And some of these places are without bills included. All this, for an acting course. Now you're also thinking, oh, what about a house share? Like living with a few other people, that should help, shouldn't it? Oh, trust me, I did that in my second year and nah, nah, bruv, I'm, nah, man, I'm good. <laughs> Do you like my janky setup? Good enough. Now, some people don't have places to live next year, like me. I haven't, I haven't, I don't know if I mentioned it before. Recently, due to the new government under Key Starmer's manifesto, Labour have set out to provide 1.5 million homes to save the dream of home ownership. In his speech to Labour Party conference, the Labour leader said he would recapture the dream of home ownership with help for first-time buyers and new infrastructure to support families and communities. As part of Labour's five missions for the government, Starmer promised shovels on the ground and cranes in the sky to deliver more beautiful cities and more prosperous towns, demanding a future must be built. I mean, I like, I, I like to think that's what's happening. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you will do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, governments have like, promised a bunch of stuff before and um, they've all said no and just fucked us all over. Remember Liz, remember Liz Truss with the fucking, like, downfall of the economy? That was well funny, I can't lie. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, for people like me who are worried about living with their parents for the next 40 years, it's given a bit of hope to the people who are mental and need their own space. I need my own space, right? Because I think this past year, I might be acoustic, probably, ADHD, probably. My whole family's got it, except for me. <laughs> so, don't know what's going on there. I don't want a place for me to stay. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to. I'm doing this, by the way, because I'm not. I'm not doing coke. It's fucking hay fever time, and me sitting around here like this. Fuck you, know. In my experience of living at university, I've had some like highs and I've had some lows. But I've come to a conclusion where I know where I want my career to go. I want a one-bedroom studio flat. Now, how? How? How do I? How do I get this? You know? How do I in the future obtain this? One, it's almost impossible right now unless a fucking miracle happens. If I'm earning, say for example, a certain amount of minimum wage, and the houses are about 1,000 to 2,000 pounds a month, there is no way for me to get a one bedroom place, especially in fucking Essex, let alone Surrey and like other fucking posh areas. I see like a bunch of dog walkers walking past and they're just staring at me. All right. 
Now, no one was waving. I was just doing that for fun. Because at the moment, I can't even afford this place. Not even affordable with my price range. If the property is bills, not included, and is unfurnished, which this one is here, that means I'd have to pay for an extra cheapest package of Wi-Fi and cheap furniture. That's fucked. The reason I bring up Labour's new manifesto thing is because for people like me who were sold on the dream of university, then do a 180, try and do the dream of YouTube and then fail and develop acute stress disorder. Yeah, that's true. I developed acute stress disorder. I'm managing it now. It's just little things that fuck me off. Antidepressants are helping. I wouldn't mind MDMA though. And then spend £1,600. If you don't know what I'm on about, um, go check out this video um, where I spend £1,600 redecorating my room. I'm never going to let that die, by the way. That put me in severe debt and it's completely my fault. I'll hold my hands up, alright? I'm not blaming um, Labour or anyone like that for fucking the position I'm in. I'm the reason I've got it. But onto the actual meat potatoes of the video. Due to the cost of living inflation within the UK's economy, this means that there are more private landlords buying old rundown properties and allowing renters to stay at an extraordinary price per month. They know in doing this that the students will eventually give up and fork over a huge amount of money. <laughs> They're laughing at me. <laughs> they know in doing this the students will eventually fork over the money and then spend £1,200 a month on rent, which leaves a student with barely enough for themselves. That's without forgetting if the student has a part-time job and is trying to earn a couple of quid on the side, which that in itself is a huge problem with the minimum wage not rising in, what's it, fucking, I don't know how many years. I don't do much research, I just like fucking chat shit. Granted, Labour have also put in their manifesto a national living wage and wanting this to rise in accordance with the housing prices. If I just show you this graph with how much the minimum wage has gone up in the past few years, eh, risen a small bit. All right, now compared with the rising in housing prices. <laughs> yeah, it's proper fucked. So before we go any further, I do want to recommend you check out this video called The Housing Crisis is the Everything Crisis by Brit Monkey. It goes like so much more in depth than I ever could on this topic and it has some fucking brilliant points on how if we just build more houses, we'll be all right. That's the end of the script. Um, I didn't think I'd get this far. It's, it's just something that I've been worried about for the past couple months. Like going into my third year, I'm gonna actually talk for now. And because the third year, is I guess the most difficult year of university. Me having to travel two hours and a half there and back in the same day, so that'd be what, um, five hours a day? Just on travel, five hours a day, bit fucked. I don't want news all to be like, oh fucking worries me, the pity guy. I'm playing the victim, fucking whatever. It's not it, I've got myself into this situation by fucking, if I never spent that much money on that video like, ages ago, I'd probably be all right, but I'm stupid. And I thought doing that could um, get me into the big fucking YouTube sphere of celebrity shit, I don't know. Now here's some videos on people that have documented it. Um, a lot fucking better than me, trust. I'm just giving it a platform. I'm just giving all the students a platform where we can talk about the mess that's going on within the student housing crisis. I know, I'm pretty sure there were like two mushrooms well, growing there. And these are like, we're talking kind of like, you pick that up and you put that in your mouth, you're growing like another size. Bro. The student maintenance system is broken, they say. Maintenance support doesn't cover anything like most students' actual living costs. Students and parents need urgent and practical solutions to delivering affordable accommodation. But for Asha, finding a student home throughout her time at university has not been easy. At one point, she was waking up at 6am to commute in for a 9am lecture. No, it's not great. I'll often finish uni at 5 and then start work at 6 and then finish work on a weekday, maybe at 3 or 4, and then later on a weekend. So it's not great, but I think you kind of just get used to it. I try to speak to my university about staying there um, for the final year and then they've changed their privacy policy now where only students in the first year um, or unless you have a medical disability um, can stay there. I get that but in our university hundreds of people leave within the first month because they realise oh, it's actually kind of shit, do you know what I mean? I told them everything about um, I have nowhere else to live at all and I, have, I don't have enough money uh, for my actual loan. Um, to pay for a place, for a one bedroom place. They just came back and was like, yeah, sorry. The same thing we told you before. That's a lot of help. The, the help that they do, they send links to different websites that you've already checked out for student accommodation. Yeah, that's a lot of help, cheers. Like, now with not being able to cover enough like basic necessities, and that leaves us all in a bit of a, what the fuck do we do? Is it better to live with your parents and then travel all the way to university and travel back with the amount of work that you gotta do and everything? And if also, if you don't have a part-time job. Also, the job market is fucking bullshit. I apply for hundreds of jobs in their boardrooms, and they're like, oh, have we given anyone any jobs today? No, ah, great work. What the fuck, man? Anyway, I'm done with my rant. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. Um, yeah, um, I'll see you later.